a great pleasure to introduce Kevin. He's been with us for, gosh, how many years now, Kevin? I stopped counting at 15. You stopped <laughs> counting at 15. So Kevin is one of our um, senior technical folks that's done a lot of technical roles, both pre-sales and post-sales, uh, with the customers, from uh, technical support to training to consulting to uh, pre-sales systems engineering. And so he's seen both sides of working with the customer requirements, both pre-sale and post-sale. Uh, he is our trainer on a lot of our products, um, including NXJ, as well as a lot of the other products. Um, we don't have a training class on Report Builder, but uh, he's he's about he he's probably the best person to give this topic on um, how to build reports and uh, with our report builder product which for those of you that don't know is a very easy to use um, kind of basic or simple client server report builder it's uh, built in our team developer product but um, because a lot of folks that have built apps and team developer have deployed report builder reports as part of those applications we probably also have some end users of applications out there today who are looking to build their own reports or kind of stand, use Report Builder as standalone as opposed to just uh, working with it within inside the team developer development environment. But uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Kevin for the uh, presentation and demo. Excellent. Thank you, Matt, and good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. So today, as Matt said, we are talking about Report Builder that is normally used in conjunction with Team Developer, but as Matt also mentioned, people are now using it standalone. And if you also look at our Q product, um, there's an eval evaluation version on our website that also uses the Report Builder that you'll see today. Okay, so what our agenda for the morning is, is a little talk about Report Builder, the basics of using Report Builder, some additional functionality that's available, and then also what's new in 5.1 and 5.2 of Team Developer and Report Builder. And then we'll demo, we'll walk through a demonstration of Report Builder to see how easy it is to gain access to your data in the database, as well as uh, work with the reports. Now, in the past, we've done some Report Builder webinars, and so some of this material will be the same. But if you have ideas for topics for other Report Builder ones, feel free to put those in at the survey at the end or in the Q&A as we go along here. Now, those of the, that might have attended other webinars of mine, I tend to try and find things of what day, what's going on today in the world or country. Tomorrow, today is actually National Handshake Day, but I couldn't find a good image for that. <laughs> Tomorrow, however, is Take Your Dog to Work Day. So we have a couple little shots there. And the one at the bottom with the dog needing coffee, that definitely fits right about uh, now. Do you, do you have a dog? I do not have a dog, I have a fish. You have a fish? Yes, yeah, that's hard to take to work. Yeah. <laughs> now, Report Builder. Anyone who has used a graphical Report Builder product will feel immediately at home using Report Builder, um, the, report, the Report Builder product, whether you've used the JReport product from JInfoNet that we actually use with NXJ, or if you use JFree Report or Crystal Reports, any of those, you'll feel right at home working with Report Builder. It's an easy to use development environment that lets you drag and drop objects from your query or your input items from Team Developer into your report, format them set control breaks, decide how they're processed, whether they're displayed or not. We'll see a lot of this functionality throughout the webinar. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of customers go straight against the database with their reports. So we support the standard major players, so Oracle, Microsoft, Sybase, ODBC, OLADB, all those can be used to feed data into the report. Now, like many products that Unify offers, Report Builder is an inter iterative tool in that you try one thing, decide if you like it, look at the output of the report, and then try again or change it. It's very easy to do repetitively to get it just right. And for me, I spend too much time tweaking small little things in reports. So, report Builder is integrated with Team Developer, so it's supplied with it. And probably a future webinar is being able to show the integration of Team Developer to Report Builder and feeding data that way. Today we're going to focus on the query side of it since that was also one of the topics in our, in our 
header for this webinar. Okay, so let's go on to Report Builder Basics. First, we'll talk about the different report types available, how those are stored, and that matters for those of you that are coming from Team Developer applications that feed data into Report Builder, and then we'll go into how you construct reports. So report types include multi-column reports, form letters, cross-tab reports, the break group, um, control break processing report type, and then a two-pass one. I'll, I'll stop at the two-pass one for a moment. I don't have a slide on that one later. That's the ability to process the report, the data one time, and then go through a second time so that you can do accumulations that you might not have had in the first pass. You can use those to go a second pass and get a more detailed um, data report. So a multi-column report is more like doing labels or so, some case where you need to do your data in multiple rows or multiple columns. As we see on the screen, or this is more of a mailing address label kind of report. Or you have small amounts of data you want to show and save space both for the end user looking at the report or those that print it out. They're very easy to do. You specify the number of columns and they'll get repeated that many times in the report. <coughs> Excuse me. The form letter is, just like you might have a mail merge with Microsoft Word, is the ability to take parts of your input data and put them into a textual context, as if you're substituting, in this example here, the percentages or quantities or discounts. So it looks as if it was typed in, but really it was fed in based on the data being passed into the report. The cross-tab report is one that gets complicated in some tools, although the, the wizard that's available in Report Builder makes it very easy to do these table matrix spreadsheet kind of reports where we're doing, in this case, movie sales by year, um, doing summations, going across and going down. So there's a wizard to make this easy to do. Um, so just know that's available as well. Then where most people spend the, their time is with control break reports, and that's what we'll demonstrate as well, where you have a set of data you've selected, usually spanning multiple tables, that has groupings of data, whether it's companies and invoices and so on, which is what we'll use our island example for, for those that are used to the Gupta SQL-based database. Um, but you'll spend a lot of time, we'll talk about that, we'll demo it, and again, that's where most people will spend their time modifying and creating new reports. So how are these stored and what happens, why do you see different report um, names or endings for each of the files? This, it really depends on how you get the data to the report. If the data is retrieved from a query, so the query is built into the report, which is what we'll demonstrate, then it's a .cqt file. That means it contains both the query and the report and you can run it standalone. You don't need team developer to run that report. If you construct a report template, <coughs> template, excuse me, I'm getting over a summer cold here. If you have just a report template, meaning no query and actually no ability to preview it or to run it because you don't have data, the data is usually fed from team developer and so it stores a QRP, so you need that, and you need Team Developer to feed the data to it. So those are the two basic types. And we've had questions before about importing Quest, um, the previous reporting tool from Gupta. Those QQT files can be imported, but they get converted into CQT files once inside Report Builder. So in case anyone's still using Quest files, you also can pull those into our Q product as well. So what happens with data? How do you get data passed in? We'll start seeing some screenshots from the development environment, and when we walk through a demo of it, we'll see how data gets sent in as well. Well, you'll notice on the left side image, we have a section called Report Items. Those are the, in order, the rows of data, the row of data that is passed into the report one row at a time. So we have the company name, address, city, state, zip, and so on. For each item, there's a data type associated with it, whether it's a string or a number, a date value. It can be an object for an image, which we'll see in a minute. It can be now a rich text object, which is one of our new features in 5.2 of Report Builder. 
So you have input items, and those can either be fed in by a query or fed in through the team developer product. <laughs> so how do you take those input items and show them in the report? You do that by dragging and dropping the item from the input, the input item onto the report or by creating a input field and typing the name of the field in there. It recognizes it by name that it will then render that value, show that value in your report. We also can place formulas and totals in the report. We'll get to those in a minute. Those are the same. Drag and drop them to put them into the report. <coughs> Excuse me again. Okay, so report sections. All, all reports have a few report sections, and depending if you're doing a control break processing, you may have multiple other sections. These sections, for those that haven't worked with too many report tools, happen based on where you are in the processing of the report. So you always will have a report header and a report footer, and a page header and page footer. For these, you might have logos, headings, column headings, page number one, dates. Then if you're doing control processing, control break processing, you will have the option of doing a header for each of the items you're breaking on, whether it's the company name or the invoice number in this example. And at the lowest level, we have the detail items, where you normally ha have in the or example of the company invoice, invoice items, you have the actual I line items that were sold in the detail block. The invoice information goes in the header of the invoice. The company name goes into the header of the company. We will see when we talk about formulas that the sections can be hidden so you can make the reports smaller but less detailed or have more detail but make them longer. So how do you actually create a report in Report Builder? If we're talking about a CQT, so one that has a query tied to it, you construct the query first, and you can, you can go back and modify this later, you choose the tables and the join conditions. You choose the columns that you're going to select. And you don't want to do all columns because usually you won't use all that data. And you can, you can have the data be filtered and grouped and ordered by. Once that query has been done, Report Builder will create a default report for you, at which point you can modify it, um, move things around, delete, change widths, and so on. Or you can take the items from the take the input items and drag and drop them into your report and create labels and boxes and lines. So, and yet usually you'll start by constructing a default template report or default report and then modifying it to fit. Once you have the basic input items in your report, so the data from the database, we then create usually create formulas to either make the data more presentable by doing formulas for concatenations, lookup values, and so on. And then you do more complicated formulas, whether you're going to hide values or show values, change formatting based on values so users can see that some value is beyond a range. As we said on sort of the intro slide, it's an iterative tool. So you try one thing, test it, see how it looks, decide if you like it. If not, go back and change it. And as we say, lather, rinse, and repeat until you uh, have a report that your customers and you like. Okay, so just a few screenshots, and we'll see this when we go and walk through the Report Builder tool itself. You'll notice now those that are used to the older versions of Report Builder that we now use ribbon bars. That was brought in in 5.1 of Report Builder. We define a query, the query editor that you probably have seen in some of the other Gupta products if you've used them. That will come up. You choose the tables, do the join items. You can do the group by and sort by conditions, view the SQL. Once you press OK, a, re a default report is generated for you, at which point you can go modify them. You can also do your grouping by the report as well. So we'll see, you'll see that in this screenshot, we have the group, break group chosen in the ribbon bar. It lists the input items, and then you can say what to break on. In this case, we're doing the company ID and the invoice number, and that's what we'll walk through in the example as well. There's a toggle, toggle between edit mode of the report and the preview mode. 
If you toggle it or, or do preview, it will run the report. You can see what it looks like. And usually, first time through, it's not going to be the prettiest report, but that gives you the option to now go modify, shift things around, make it look better, um, and so on. Okay, so what else can you do in Report Builder? A few things that are built in functionality are working with totals, images, and then also a little bit more on formulas. Totals are a special object in the report itself. They are aggregate functions that can do things you, you want to do frequently, whether it's doing averages of values, counts of rows, minimum and maximum values, or accumulation, summations of values. You can also choose with these totals whether they reset based on a group column, so you place the values probably in a header or footer section, or at the whole report, or for each page that's, that's done. So you can have totals based on different conditions, or depending on how your users want to see this information. Okay, a quick example of a total. You'll notice that we have the input items, the formulas, and we have a couple of totals created already here. One is the sum of quantity and price. The other one is the sum of the invoice total. And then we're constructing a new one here called invoice count. <clears throat> where we're just going to do a count operation against the invoice number, <coughs> and then we can either choose whether it is on the first time it runs the report or on the break of the invoice number or company ID. And what you'll notice in the image at the bottom, that next to company total and report total, we have the sum of the quantity price and the sum of the invoice total placed in their appropriate sections. Okay, how do you handle a binary object, images inside Report Builder? There's a picture object in the Report Builder palette of tools, and the values can either be static, meaning you've chosen a file from the file system, or they can be dynamic, so as data is fed into it. They can be an input item, or a formula can be used to determine uh, where the file is, where the image is as well. So if we look at the query wizard first on the left, You'll see on our product table, there's a picture object inside there. It's a long var char, it could be a long var binary now with SQL base. And then once on the input item side, once you've created your query, constructed the report, the input item now has the picture object there, and you'll see it shows up as an object type, which means you now can use that to feed the picture in the, uh, in the report itself, and that will happen automatically. So when you see, a, we'll see the input item here, we run the report, we get the, the images of the patterns used for each of the products in the island database. I notice in the layout at the top, it shows up as a small box to the right side there. Okay, formulas. A lot of built-in functionality with Report Builder. However, you frequently want to control what the end result of the report is, or how the data is presented to make it look nicer and cleaner for the user. You can do all those with report builder formulas. Certainly things like string manipulation, concatenation, um, replacement, substitution, case conversion, comparison operators based on certain conditions, decide whether you're going to hide sections, highlight values. Um, there's date manipulation, numbers, so basic formula operations. We have another webinar we did a while back that goes more into more details of formulas as well. There's an aggregate function, so you can do similar things as the totals inside the formulas as well. And then there's, of course, there's ways to work with the report data itself. The items are fed into the formula. Okay, so a sample of formulas. In the formulas section of the tree on the left side of the report builder, you'll see that there are formulas that are numbered. Those actually correspond to the input items. Whenever you use a query to create a report, the input items get their own formula. That's just the way the tool works. So don't worry about those, but don't delete those. What you'll see is we have a formula called non-USA country. And what that does, it does a string comparison um, compares whether it's USA or not, and determines whether it returns the country value to the report or not. So if you're doing address labels, 
you don't need the country if it's for the U.S., assuming you're mailing from the United States. But if you are mailing international, you need the country there. And so this determines whether it shows the country or not, rather than just having it be an extra line, or having it be an empty value. I was reading one of the notes here from one of the customers. Okay, we have a specific one. We'll come back to your Q&As at the end here. Different, so formulas, I mentioned, can also be used for hiding and showing different objects. And this can be at the fields, individual input item fields, labels, lines, the entire sections can be hidden. So you can make the report very dynamic based on what you want to show the user. So the conditional hiding just takes the Boolean value, determines whether or not it's going to show it or not. So you'll see in that little icon, little screenshot below, conditional display takes a formula, and it's always the same way. If the formula is not zero, it will display the value. Now again, that could be a field, it could be a line, it could be an entire section, all of that's available. Okay, so an example of conditional hiding here, we have a field, we're going to display it based on our formula, and this is comparing our quantity price formula, so we're using a formula inside a formula, that minus 200, depending on the value of that. So if it is more than 200, oh, yes, yeah, so more than 200, so the way the formulas work, you have the 101 is the middle value is if it is equal to zero, that's the value it will return. To the left side of those three is if it's less than zero, the comparison, it returns a one which is a true. So the only time that this formula will be true is that the quantity price formula returns a value that is less than 200, so whether or not it will show this field. And this is a, a contrived example, so you can get much more complicated and getting to do hide entire sections and lines. Okay, we want to go over the details of what's been added in in Report Builder 5.1 and 5.2. So we'll talk about the 5.1 features and then the 5.2 features, and then we'll go to the demo of Report Builder. Okay. In 5.1, there's a modernization part of Team Developer and Report Builder. So we added the different themes for the development environment. So you're used to these in Windows, so we made a, a newer look and feel. Full Unicode support, so multi-byte characters are now fully allowed and supported in your reports. We saw in some of the screenshots that the ribbon bar is available is how you now navigate through your reports and work with them. So like Office 2007, as users moved to that, we needed to give an interface they were familiar with. And now probably the, the biggie is that people want to export their reports as PDFs. That's now natively available in Report Builder 5.1 and now 5.2. One thing I'll add to this too for Kevin, uh, the other big thing was kind of a uh, platform refresh. So just getting support, uh, the latest connectivity support for the True. latest database drivers True. and Windows platforms and Absolutely. things like that. That was the other big thing in right. the theme in 5.1 and 5.2. Yep, getting the routers up to date with the yeah. conversions for Oracle and other databases. Absolutely. Thanks, Matt. Okay, so what do we add in 5.2? Well, we added rich text support, the ability to orient your text, able to do watermarks, and then just a couple of quick menu options we added in to, for end of use, uh, ease of use in the tool itself. <coughs> the rich text format object, it's really a file format that allows you to have sort of marked up detailed data containing images, binary, lists, marked up data, and a single value. So we allow you now to take a value, a rich text object that can be in your database as a long bar char and a long bar binary and render it on the form showing the markup. So you see the images are in there, the tables that have been created, the hyperlinks that are there, as well as uh, multi byte characters that we now support. So we added that in to 5.2. There's also now rich text objects on the 
widget toolbar to let you place it there, then tie that to the input item. In this case, we have a rich text field. We chose this input item. That tells the report builder to look at that, show it, and make sure to present all the marked up items. So the screenshot here is just showing the rich text field that shows a link as well as a colored text inside the rich text object. This is from re team developer that then will get fed into the report builder that would render it exactly the same way. Okay, so how do we work with a rich text report? Same way, you define a query. In this case, we're choosing a table that has a numeric value in a rich text long var char field. And then if we ran that report, it would go ahead and show the, the um, rich text output. And if we get a chance, we can show that in the demo as well. So one thing we also added in into 5.2 is the ability to rotate text. So you can turn it on its side, you can turn it upside down, um, as well as facing it full 270 degrees. So there's a property now in the text field on the uh, font tab that says rotation. 90 degree actually turns it to be counterclockwise, so it turns it to the left. If you want it the other way, go to 270. That's probably the most common those two properties are the most common ways to do this. And you'll see that now we're showing the status value at 90 degrees, showing that the, in this case, paid for all these values. So you can turn it. So if you're trying to save space horizontally in your report, you can turn it on end and have it show up rotated. What we also added in 5.2 was the ability to put a watermark, either as a text or as an image, into the output of a report. So you can put proprietary or confidential or preliminary or do a nice background image into your report with just an easy setting of a watermark. It can be a text, it can be, again, it can be an image. All those are available. Now I mentioned we did the ribbon bar in Team Developer 5.1, or Report Builder 5.1, and of course 5.2. We added a couple of options that just were more for ease of use. The ability to, off the file menu, do the close button, just repeatedly press it to close off multiple reports instead of having to select the report, get, close the X icon in it. So if you open a lot of reports, you can easily get rid of those as necessary. And then there's now an exit option off of here on the ribbon bar rather than having to go to the X icon in the upper corner. Okay, as I tend to say, Let's talk more demo, but I think I'm already past that mark. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to Report Builder and show you how easy it is to do this. So I will share my application of Report Builder already running. We'll close out of some reports we already had here. And we're going to go to do a new report. Now let me maximize the screen here. And we'll do our new report. So we have a blank report. What you do first with the report is you go to the report tab. Notice we have the ribbon bar, but most things are disabled. We're going to define a query first. As we said, we can go against your normal choice of databases, Informix, Sybase, Microsoft, Oracle, and we're going to use SQL base. So we have the island database everyone who knows and loves and seen it for a while here, but it shows a very good company invoice, invoice item scenario. So we'll log into that. We'll get a list of tables. And what we'll do is we'll choose the company table as our top level. Company has invoices and invoices of invoice items. <coughs> Excuse me. You'll notice that it tried to join automatically. It does its best, but in this case it wasn't quite correct. So we want to go to this join item and actually delete this because the invoice item isn't tied to company, it's tied to the invoice itself. So we then can drag and drop the drag and tie the relationship easily just by clicking on invoice number and then clicking over to invoice number and it will do the relationship. Now we don't want to select all the values for these tables because that would make a very wide default report. So we're going to unselect some of these. So we'll not do the URL and the line terms, facts. We'll just get rid of some of these ones for now. 
That's right. We're actually going to get rid of city, state, and uh, no, we'll keep city, state, and zip. We'll just remove them in a moment. On the invoice, we don't need the company ID or company name. And we'll leave the rest. Now we'll get rid of employee ID. On the invoice item, so the grandchild level, if you will, we don't need the invoice number to be rendered. Um, and we'll leave the rest of those there. So now if I press OK, it'll take us a couple of seconds. The report's generated, and thus it's pretty wide. We have all of our data in here. If we toggle back to there, we now get the report. And by the way, we always can go back to our query and go see what the SQL that was used to construct this and run this. So we have our report now. What I forgot to do was to do the group. So let's do this from here. We'll say we want to group by the company ID and then the invoice number. And so now we have group sections. What you'll notice is we now added a header for each of our two items and a footer for each of our two break items. So we now can start moving some of these things around. And I can press the insert key to create some lines here, a couple more. What I'm going to do is take the company ID, the company ID, company name, address. I'm going to cut those out of here, place them over into there. Now I'm actually going to delete the city, state, and zip because we're going to do a formula for that. And so now we have then, oh, that's something. That's a company. So in the invoices will do the similar kind of things. We'll throw a couple of lines into there. Now, as I have said a couple of times, we end up getting things pretty wide here on the default one. I guess we'll get rid of country while we're there. And we'll delete the those, place those up into the invoice section. The first time through, we end up moving left and right a bit to get these created. And you can change the style for an entire group by just changing the header. So we're going to say we're going to make that one bold. <coughs> we'll make the company a larger font so it's easier to read. Okay, so when we can go preview this anytime, press the toggle button. We'll see now we get the company information, the invoice number, and then the line items for each of those. Spacing is not perfect. We can change some highlighting. Press toggle back. Delete some of our rows that we have here. You notice the page header now has all this information. In many, in re reality, we probably don't want these here, so we're just going to delete the lines. Now, what I will do, however, is go ahead and create a formula. We talked about formulas. By the way, we'll go over and see that we have input items for all the items we had in our query. Now, in our formulas, I mentioned that we have the numeric ones for each of the input items. So let's go construct a formula that gives us the city, state, and zip. So we're just going to do the city. You'll notice in the formula editor we get the input items, additional formulas because you can embed them in each other, and there's a bunch of functionality that's available. So we're going to do the concatenation operator. We're going to do the city, concatenate with a comma and a space, and I can either type in or double click on it. And we'll get it a little bit more. And let's try to do this right. City, state, and then we'll double click on zip. And when we exit the editor, it'll tell us if we had this right or not. We'll give it a name. There's a formula. Incomplete or invalid syntax. So this is where I have to figure out where I didn't do a correct. Oh. After my last one, I don't have to do a concatenator. Now we have our city, state, and zip. We can now go drop this into our header section for our country or for our company. And let's put a box around all this just to make it easier. Get it to. Oops. Let's start at the top corner here. Sometimes getting this just right. We can resize it later. Okay, we'll resize it now. Okay, now let's go to preview it. We can toggle it. And you'll see we have our company information highlighted. And now we'll go ahead and modify it again to 
Look to the format. Let's do the summation total here now. We'll go delete one of our lines. One thing that I'll stop for a moment here, just a usage one. If you don't have reset cursor set, it will remember what you did last. So it kept trying to create a box here. I prefer to go to the selection tool, so reset cursor will go back to that each time. Okay, we'll delete there. So let's do a summation on the items, on the line items here, on the totals. So I'm going to go back over here. We still have item style and ID. I'm going to move these back over. As you'll notice, the first time through, as I said, you end up shifting it left and right a bit. Okay. And now we're back to our detailed section here. So what I'm going to do is move some of these over. And what we want to do in the detail is that the footer of each invoice is give a total of the quantity times item price. So we're going to do one more formula. And we'll just do quantity or item price times the quantity. Okay, so then now we'll place that at the end. Okay, let's go reinsert that one there. Okay, we'll toggle that. Oh, we didn't get our right value there. Okay, we'll just redo that real quickly. Make sure that quantity times the item price. For some reason, my formula is not showing its correct value there. So, still not. We'll come back to that. Okay, let's go back about doing a formula for hiding and showing. So if we want to do a formula to determine whether or not we want to show different items, we can do something as basic as doing hide or show details. And we can just say do a zero or a one, for example. We're just going to call this one hide details. And we can go for the entire data block here, go to its properties, and then do a conditional display. Go to our, to our formula there. Hide details. So if, it's, if we said it returned one, so we're going to do a hide detail. So in this case, oh, did not get that correct here. This did not hide the details. Go back to the properties for our detail block. That displays it. Mine's reversed there. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back to here. Okay, and let's make sure the high details. So this should, should still show them. We'll go back and modify high details to show zero as a value. And toggle it again, and then it hides the detail items from the report. So this might be passed in from Team Developer as a input variable as a flag to the report. So let's set that back so we see all the detail items. So one last formula that we'll do is a slightly more complicated one, which is to highlight the value of our invoice number depending on whether it is divisible by three or not. Let's do the display one, but let me make sure we have the right numbers here. Six, 27, these are invoice numbers that will work. So one more formula, and this is just showing the if condition here. So we'll do the number if, and we'll do an embedded value here that will do number mod, and inside that we'll do the first parameter as the invoice number. And we'll do this mod three. So anything divisible by three, this is a silly example. So if it is divisible by three, then we will, if, it's, if it is divisible by three, we'll say show it. Otherwise, we won't do it. Okay, so now I have a formula there. The way we're going to use this is on the invoice number. We're going to go ahead and just set the properties for it. 
we'll get to conditional, we'll go to the font tab, do a conditional display of our setting here. Conditional um, display of the font style. Let's go to colors and do it that way. So we'll make the background color be yellow if the value. And we'll choose our new formula we just created. Oh, except that we did not change its name, did we? So that is going to be formula 45. Let's go back and edit our formula. My apologies. We'll rename this. Mod 3 example. Okay, we'll go to the properties of our field yet again. Go back to the colors. Make sure our formula is there this time. Yep. Mod 3 example, make the background yellow. Okay. And notice divisible by 3, 6, 27, 33. We now have highlighted this. Again, you can do things like date manipulation and so on. And then the only other thing we'll go back here is our watermark. We mentioned that as one of the new 5.2 features. If we want to do a text watermark, we can do it as confidential. And usually we'll do the washout because otherwise it uh, sort of stands out a bit. And we then go run it. We'll get the confidential in our wider setup here. Normally we change the report size. Mm. Yep, so we're on the side. Okay. So now that we've gone through a couple of examples, I think it's probably time to go over to the Q&A section of our presentation. Great. So what we'll do is, uh, thank you, Kevin. Yep. What we'll do is uh, take a minute, minute here for you to post your questions. And again, just use the uh, Q&A button on your WebEx toolbar, the one with the question mark. We'll go silent for about 30 seconds or so, give you a chance to post the questions, and then we'll come back on and start going through them. Through our questions, uh, the first question is, I tried to create a new report query. I clicked SQL Server, but how do I connect and pass user ID and password? Right, usually there's a database connection tool now that's included with Report Builder and Team Developer that makes it easier to manage the connections. Otherwise, this goes into the SQL.ini file that those are familiar with from the Team Developer product. So I'm not sure if that is what you're running into as a challenge. But certainly, if that's not it, we can certainly you can post to our Unify forums if you don't have support directly through Unify. So basically, they're trying to uh, connect to a SQL Server database um, or do do the database connection. Exactly. So, so there's a there is depending on what release you're on. If you're not on the latest release, it's a little more involved. You have to actually go in and edit your SQL INI file. file. Exactly. Um, if you don't have uh, um, um, an expert, actually, if you're using if you're using an application, go to your application developer, um, and they can tell you how to do that. Right. They already will already have this set up from the team developer side. Exactly for the application. Um, but if for some reason you don't have access to that, um, as Kevin said, if you're not on support with us, you can still post it. There's a Report Builder forum um, in at our, on our website. We'll give you the website here in a minute at the end and um, uh, uh, post a question, and I'm sure you'll get a response. All right, <laughs> next question. Uh, which, which releases of Report Builder are supported on Windows 7? 5.2 is the only one that supported. Right, so we actually certified, if you will, and tested 5.2 on Windows 7. Um, so we know that one works and we support that. That's not to say that, for example, 5.1 or maybe 4.2 might, you know, or older releases, it's possible they'll run on Windows 7. Uh, however, we haven't tested it, um, uh, you know, and if, we, if you do run into an issue, we may or may not be able to help you. Certainly, you know, we'll try. Right. But uh, we, we can't guarantee it. Like with other, with 5.2, we've tested it and know for sure it works. Right. Next question. How much is Report Builder? It's actually very, very cheap. Uh, for, for what you get in terms of just a simple graphical client server Report Builder, 
I don't think there's a better price point out there. It's somewhere in the $150 to $180 range um, per uh, developer, if you will, per person that's going to build reports with it. And um, uh, you can actually buy that on our online store. So I'm not sure if we have the link to that. I don't think we have the link to that on, on the web here. We should. We do. Oh, we do. Good. Okay. Good. Um, you'll, we'll see that at the end. All right. Next question. With Oracle, I have a DB user that logs into one database and has a database link to another <coughs> database to run a join query right. to get data from two databases. I'm glad you're following this, Kevin. Is this a problem for Report Builder? Also, the query is complex, so can I just paste the SQL in? Right. So two parts to the question here. Um, I don't believe there's an issue using the link table across the connection. Um, I, I believe our router supports that. We can verify that off the line or can, we can figure out on the forms, but I'm pretty sure that works fine. The second part, though, of pasting in SQL, no. The report builder product does not let you edit that SQL directly. You can't edit it and paste it in. If you need to do that, the usual route is to go through Team Developer, is to run the query inside Team Developer and feed that data to the report tool itself after already processing it. Okay, great. Next question. Can we export a report to XLS to format? format? Well, that brings us to the Q product, and which really uses Report Builder as a report engine, and that product, and Matt can go into a little more detail probably as well, that puts a different front end of the Report Builder as well as giving the ability to export out the output of the report to things like Excel and PDF and CSV output and so on. So to answer your question, Report Builder, just in the standalone does Report not. Builder product, does not let you export to, uh, to XLS. Yeah. It, 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 you know, you can do it into PDF directly, um, and then I guess there's the QRF or QRP format, which is the just the report builder exactly. format itself. Yeah. However, as Kevin mentioned, we have a product called Q, also available on the online store, by the way, which is an end user query and reporting tool um, along the lines of the Quest product, for those right. of you that remember it. Um, it has so the Q <coughs> product and it is available. It has a uh, report builder as the reporting piece of this query and reporting tool, but it also has the ability to uh, graphically build and manage queries, um, do exports and importing of data very easily, and you can export it to, um, to uh, the XLS format or Excel spreadsheet. All right, so I believe there's one up earlier. <clears throat> how do you save that report for future use? And I guess it depends on what you mean. So certainly from the report builder, if I say to a file save, that CQT file is saved off, and I can go double click on it in the environmental, open it up, and I can run that report. The same is, to, to, is true of a QRP file as a report template, but then you use the file calls in Team Developer to call the report, send data to it, and tell where the output to go. All right, that's all the questions we have so far. So we're going to go ahead and start wrapping this up. But if you have another question, post it, and uh, we'll take the time to answer it here before we end the session. So uh, first of all, we want to thank you for um, participating, both Kevin and I. Uh, when you exit, you will get a survey. Let us know what you thought of the webinar. Did it cover what you wanted? Was it what you expected? Is there additional uh, content on Report Builder that you'd like to see in an upcoming webinar? Uh, we definitely use those to drive these. We do these monthly on several products. Um, in fact, we have one next Wednesday on Team Developer 6. We're doing a whole ser monthly series on the Team Developer 6 product, which is coming out towards the end of this calendar year. Um, we did a kind of an overview of all the different deployment targets for TD6 last month. But uh, this one um, on Wednesday is very, it goes into detail on um, one of the, the graphical controls in TD6, which is the tree object, if you will. Yep. So um, stay tuned for that. If you use Team Developer, that's next Wednesday at the same time. Uh, also, just some of the upcoming events we have. Um, we have our DevCons coming up here um, towards the end of this year. 
I highly recommend that you find your way to one of these this year uh, because um, TD6 will be out. We'll have the SQL Base 11.6 out. There's just a lot of exciting releases on all the products and uh, a lot of things to be a part of. Now, what we have posted here are the ones in Europe, um, as you see, in early November. Uh, we will be posting the ones shortly for uh, North America and Canada. Those will most likely be um, the beginning of December after the Thanksgiving holiday. And then I see we do have the online store link there, the support forms link, as well as link to documentation. So um, definitely take advantage of those uh, resources. There is no cost to use them. And uh, with that, I think I don't see any other questions that were posted. So again, Kevin and I thank you for participating. Have a good day. Make sure you shake someone's hand because it's National Handshake Day. And, and take your dog to work take tomorrow. Take your dog to work tomorrow. They, uh, actually, studies have shown that uh, dogs in the workplace um, actually boost morale and productivity. I was just reading about this uh, the other day. So you tell our boss this and it'll work? No, I don't. I don't think our boss will go for it anyway. But uh, um, he is a dog and cat person. Hmm. Anyway, you guys have a good one, and we'll see you on the next webinar. Okay. Thanks, everyone.